Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Jim Gibbons and Catherine Malloy, President and CEO of Goodwill Industries International and Goodwill of Greater Washington, respectively. Goodwill provides job training and employment placement for people who have disabilities and other employment challenges and is also known for operating a network of discount stores. Jim comes to Goodwill from National Industries for the Blind and before that, AT&T, and Catherine joined Goodwill after serving as a Clear Channel radio executive. Jim and Catherine have generously agreed to share some of their experiences with us. I'd like to thank you both for joining us today. Thank you for having Thanks. us. So Goodwill looms very large in, in so many communities, and you provide so many services. But what is surprising about Goodwill always to me is how many of your services people do not know about. They see the stores, but you also provide so many other types of services. Why don't we start just by talking about, from a national perspective and also from a Greater Washington perspective, about Goodwill and the range of services that you provide. Do you want to start, Jim? Sure, sure. Well, you're right. Many, many people know us by one of the nearly 2,800 stores that are out there. But that network of 2,800 stores, which is operated by 165 uh, independent Goodwills in the United States and Canada and then in 13 other countries uh, provide a wide range of employment, job training, uh, and other human services to support their unique community needs. And those services may range from job placement services, job preparation services, new skills training, and Goodwills will take a sector approach often dependent on where are the opportunities in their particular community. What industry is growing in their community and then how do they morph their programming and services to meet their specific community needs? So you're triangulating between the needs of specific communities, the activity, the industrial activity, the jobs activity in those uh, communities and the needs of of people who are seeking jobs and, and who, who might be able to be um, beneficially connected to those opportunities. Yeah, our sweet spot is, at, is, is, that, is that connection, that intersection. We often think of it as that the connection between caring and, and enterprise, that uniting of those two. Mm -hmm. You know, Mark, I'll take it even like a step further on a local level. Um, and I'll use uh, Goodwill of Greater Washington as, as one example and then uh, another one of our goodwills is another example because we are very community focused and um, let me first of all say you know both Jim and I have got really um, we've had rich backgrounds and and very fortunate to have those backgrounds but what specifically drew me to goodwill was that the retail store it is that it is the epitome of a social enterprise and the retail stores are a business right and we are very blessed with the donors that come and donate their goods and then the shoppers that come and shop at our stores. But the profits from those stores are what is fed back into our goodwills to actually create and produce and perform the programs for people with disabilities and disadvantage. It, 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 is, the, it is the best uh, means of actually being able to provide services for the community. So, you know, Jim was talking about community needs. In our particular community, um, hospitality is a very, very strong need for employment. And so Goodwill of Greater Washington has a very specific training program where we train uh, people on uh, hospitality. And then what happens is that we, all, we also have a complete program where we work with employers in the community in order to place the people that we train in the hospitality field. So that's in our community, but I'll use Miami. Miami is a manufacturing town, has a manufacturing um, entity to it, and our Goodwill in Miami uh, employs people in manufacturing, and they are probably, they are one of the number one manufacturers of American flags. Who would ever know? But as a result of that enterprise, 
um, they actually go ahead and they employ people. And, and Jim, I don't know how many people they employ, but it is a tremendous amount of people with disadvantages and disabilities uh, in that manufacturing entity. And then the flags that they produce go all over the country and are sold. And by selling and the profit that they make goes back to employing people with disadvantages and disabilities. So it's really community-based, it's community needs, and it's working within your community. One of the things that is so astounding about the nonprofit sector to people who are not in it is that the majority of revenue that comes to nonprofits is earned income. The second part of that revenue is, is philanthropic, individual philanthropy, and the third smallest part is, is government revenue. Mm -hmm. What's very interesting to me about your model is that you not only take material that people would prefer to donate than keep, um, and, and you find a repurpose for that. There is a um, recycling, reuse, uh, reinvigoration of something that somebody lovingly manufactured previously, invested mm -hmm. their work in. But you now are, through an exchange, getting that material out there to people who can use it, you're also self-sustaining mm -hmm. uh, simultaneously. Mm -hmm. There's no bottom line profit, there is revenue that then gets recycled back into the community for the purposes of your job training programs and your other programs. It is really such a virtuous cycle and so true to how this country was originally formed. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a great example to us all. Mm -hmm. And, and to take that even one step further, Goodwill of Greater Washington, we had uh, 457,000 donations. 457,000 donations. donations last year. How, uh, what and is the donation volume on a, if you were to take that nationally, Jim, is, is it even no. countable? Oh, no, no, we do track it. And I don't know the number off my head, but I, off the top of my head, but... You know, we will have 80 million individual transactions that take place across that network of stores and uh, every year. Yeah, and what's fabulous about that is, is that, that means if, when we say donation, that means if you bring in a shirt, that's okay. considered donation, a donation, or if you bring in a truckload, that's considered a donation. But what it is is 400, and I'll just, again, just in Washington, 457,000 individuals were involved with Goodwill. And so the community gets involved in Goodwill, and they don't even realize the magnitude of what those donations. So there were 80 million people across the country that at some point in time touched Goodwill, and not only touched Goodwill, but then touched the people who we serve. It's an incredible organization. It's interesting because many people, you think of that donation when it's a, the sp spring cleaning and uh, you think about it as the end of something in many cases, but it really is the start of something pretty fabulous. It's the start of new opportunities because when you drop off uh, your spring cleaning to Goodwill, then that becomes a mechanism uh, for employment. Uh, Goodwills across the country take that entire, um, the entire uh, social enterprise of the, the retail network and turn it into an employment and training platform. So mission is integrated throughout that. And then uh, when those revenues are generated, new programming is developed. And then that community, that bag of clothing or used goods, is really an investment back into your neighborhood. So it's a pretty powerful new beginning. What I also find so wonderful about the Goodwill model is the dignity that is built into that model. When the retail stores are open, they are cleaned, they are um, well appointed, uh, they're not fancy, um, but the people that walk into them are people from all walks of life. They're people of all races, of all neighborhoods, of all ethnicities, mm -hmm. um, of all languages, and um, people with means, people with very few means, and they're, they're standing shoulder to shoulder, and they're doing their commerce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that in and of itself is, in many respects, it is, a, it is a social statement. It is as powerful as anything that you do. Right. You know, Mark, it's, um, it is a business. The retail stores are a business. And so we are competitive within the retail market. And in order to be competitive, to your point, I, I say you walk into um, 
most Goodwill stores and you will find uh, a, a store that is not only clean and neat, um, but inviting. And, and we, we have to be because, as I said, we are, we are competitive. We're competitive with other major retailers. Mm -hmm. Um, and we also are in neighborhoods where strong donors can donate. And so therefore, you want to make sure that the community is also proud of the product that you're putting out. And, and not last, this is not last, and it, it's really the first part, is that as an employer, you want to make sure that your associates have a good environment and a strong environment in which to work in, and that they themselves are proud to say, you know what, I'm goodwill. Um, and, and that is something that I will say every goodwill across the country is not only cognizant of, but when the CEOs get together and when we, when we talk or when our retail vice presidents get together, it is a conscious, deliberate effort to put a strong uh, retail product out to the public. Um, and as a result, what happens is you do get more shoppers, but you also get more donors. And so there is, uh, there's a selfish aspect to that um, in order to make sure that we continue to um, grow and to thrive as a retail business in order for the profits to grow and thrive, in order to then go ahead and put it back into our programs and our community. When you look at, at hiring your senior people, and they need to have business savvy, to, to come into this type of a nonprofit in particular. What do you look for in terms of balancing those, those various competency areas? Jim, you want to I, I'll, that? I'll, take, I'll take the lead. I, uh, when I joined this space 14 years ago, I, I remember you know, people talking about giving back. And as compelling as that is, uh, you know, what you'll see throughout the Goodwill Network and through a lot of organizations in this space, is the giving back is a very important component, but it doesn't mean that the same uh, business disciplines, high level of skills, focus, and hard work uh, aren't just as important. And so when 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 we're looking for talent, you know, especially goodwill, when you look at our model, uh, we are. Uh, very interested in a strong and professional talent base because the communities that we're part of have high demands of us. And so uh, it's not, it's, it's not uh, as simple as people who want to just do nice things. Uh, it really is a high expectation uh, on our team across the country, a high, high expectation to deliver with excellence to perform and to take the game to the next level day after day after day. And is there a special knowledge of the nonprofit sensibility uh, as well? Because in a for-profit organization, there is so much, for example, in at t or in Clear Channel, uh, so much is about generating a, a bottom line profit, right. uh, shareholder value, uh, quarterly results, but, but very unitary, um, whereas in a nonprofit, you don't have profit. You have to think about the bottom line, but you also have to think about so many other dimensions that, quote, would interfere in a normal business, mm -hmm. bottom line orientation. Right. Is, is, is there a, a sensibility that comes from the nonprofit that is also uh, required for success? You know, Mark, I think that, um, that I'll answer a question that you had before and then also this, uh, this question as well. You do have to have um, a heart and a head. Uh, and, and the difference, I think, in a for-profit is you really are focused on the stock, mm -hmm. stockholders, the stock market. Right. That's what you are focused on. In, in, um, in the nonprofit world, you're focused on people. It's, it's a real different, it's, it's a, so it's a different um, thought process. And, and whether you are with Goodwill or any other uh, you know, organization that is a nonprofit, it really ends up back to the people. It's not back to stockholders, stock market, the stock. Um, and so therefore, people that come to us and say, you know, like myself, you know, wanting to give back, you want to give back, but at the same time, you also have to make sure that, as Mother Teresa said, no money, no mission. And so people who have been in business are excellent in the nonprofit world because they do have the disciplines of running a business. 
good intentions are essential but not sufficient. Business competence is essential but not sufficient. It is the combination of business, business competence and values, the right. intention to right. do. Yes. And then you have to hire people in, in different spaces, like, and I was thinking about, uh, we have case managers, mm -hmm. right? and, and they are total heart, and they should be, because they work one-on-one -on -one with the people who we are serving. Um, but the person who's the vice president over those case managers has to realize that there's a cost factor to that, and where is the money being spent, and how is it being spent, and, and are we maximizing the donations, whether they be from our stores or donations from, uh, you know, uh, philanthropic donations or, to your point, government grants, et cetera. There is a responsibility that we have to those people to make sure that we are using their money wisely. Um, and so, therefore, you have people at a higher level that are very cognizant of that. But then you have people at the one-on-one -on -one case management work whose hearts are far bigger than their heads and it should be. Yes. Uh, and how do you how do you deal with uh, the issue um, of uh, potential codependence creeping into the the way you interact with with people who receive your services? Is there a philosophical uh, approach in which um, you try to uh, encourage people to look at at real impacts that they are having? Um, how do you how do you gauge Metrics is very important in business. Metrics, mm -hmm. I'm sure you have metrics in terms of certainly your, your retail operations, but given that you have also programmatic work, I'm sure you have metrics there as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I think at a national level, well, one, across goodwill, we, we measure everything. Uh, it's a very important part of our, our culture. Uh, and because we grew up, really, as some people refer to us as the original social enterprise, we know how to be market driven. So we not only listen to the customers from the donated goods stores perspective, but we listen to the people we serve so that we improve our services. We listen to the employers that we partner with to place people. So being market driven is an important cultural out attribute uh, of goodwill. Uh, but uh, the other cultural kind of uh, characteristic that, that I see throughout Goodwills, it's very consistent, uh, is, is, is that of, of we're an organization that really is, is the teach a person how to fish. Uh, there are places in society to give a person a fish because they have that immediate need, but we're a teach a person how to fish, which really is culturally translates into the service providers elements of our, our organization to have high expectations, to believe in the capabilities of the people we serve. And that translates into those high expectations. And you know what we strive for is that there's not a codependency, that the people that we serve gain independence. And we generally believe that that happens through the power of work. We are successful when someone no longer needs us. That's, that's success. That is true success. And we build all of our programs around making sure that the person has a holistic approach and that a holistic approach to self-sufficiency. And so when people come to us, it's yes, we help, but we also want to make sure that helping doesn't mean that they come back and come back right. and come back to us. Helping mm -hmm. is giving them a path, giving them either a career path, giving them uh, a social path, that they don't ever have to come back. And that when they come back, they come back as um, an ex-graduate. They come back mm -hmm. as someone who used to work at Goodwill. They come back as another donor to us. Um, they come back as a part of our organization. And, and that's when success is truly felt. And, and that is a thread that just is um, through the entire culture of all Goodwills. How does the funding work and the relationship work between national and the, the various uh, regional offices? The real power of goodwill resides at the local level. That is where the impact is made, and each goodwill is an independent uh, organization with an autonomous board of directors. And the reason that design works so powerfully for us is because I can't sit in Washington, D.C. and determine the best use of resources in Akron, Ohio for that particular community. 
So our structure is one of a membership, or you could liken it to a franchise model in many ways, uh, where members pay uh, dues to Goodwill Industries International, and then their expectations, not unlike uh, expectations of their own team members or of the people that we serve, are very high of Goodwill Industries International, and their expectations range uh, from that of they expect leadership and they expect service uh, from the global office so that they can better serve the local mission. So what kind of services do you provide in, in terms of, uh, of that part of it that, that, are, that are valuable to the, mm -hmm. the regions? Mm -hmm. Is it the technology to run the retail operations, the, the, the point of sale technologies? Are there uh, particular mm -hmm. guides in terms of of linear programming to ensure that the routing that takes place to pick up materials are you providing some other uh, mm -hmm. support? Well, there's a there's a it's a, it's a multifaceted kind of question. So first and foremost, uh, our role is to ensure the integrity of the brand, and so all goodwills operate at a high level of what we characterize as membership standards. So first and foremost, our job is to support the membership and ensure that that we operate at those levels. Uh, the next uh, level of service is really when it comes to brand and and this is from a national perspective would be uh, leadership at the brand, uh, uh, national marketing, cause marketing, uh, partnership development, mm -hmm. public policy influence and support. So we work at those levels. Uh, but really uh, our leadership can be probably 10% at the kind of the, the point of the spear. Uh, and then really the bulk of the leadership really has to be kind of from the middle. Well, we, I in particular, but I and my team are very engaged with listening to the membership to understand the needs and then taking the input from 165 leaders and then feeding it back to move us together as a movement. And then the, the third element of service is uh, true customer service to the Goodwills, and that could be in consultative services as it relates to technology, the donated goods, uh, retail social enterprise, marketing support, uh, state or local level public policy support, uh, or um, a variety of other areas where we help good, Goodwills uh, maintain uh, you know their growth, and I'd say the 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 other element of the the national or the global uh, office is really that of knowledge transfer. Uh, Goodwills innovate at the local level every day, and that's an area where where honestly we try to be a catalyst for success or stay out of the way, and then help replicate and facilitate the movement of that knowledge and capability. And you know, Mark, you. Um the question before when you went ahead and you were talking about um, funding, you know, it is Jim's responsibility at the membership level that he has strong people because they really are the face nationally of goodwill. And and I will say, especially in the grant department, mm -hmm. um, the, it is an incredible, incredible grant division. Um, and I'll just mention her name, Wendy Copeland, there is no better. Um, and what happens is that, uh, and, and I can use, I'll, I'll use it for instance, Walmart comes and wants to go ahead and support Goodwills across the country. Right. And they can do it on an individual basis, or they can go ahead and come to Wendy and say, we would like to do a program where we are assisting women across the country, and we would like to give Goodwill International a support, and then we would like you to go ahead and make sure that it is used within the markets, and here are the markets we want to work with, in order to make this money go far. And they have a one point of contact. And, and so what happens in that case is they do go out to the locals. We have a choice whether we want to engage or not engage. Right. When we do engage, though, we, there is an expectation from Goodwill International as to how our engagement is. And they make us very accountable, and appropriately so, because they're working on the level with, let's say, a Walmart on a national level. 
And so that's a, they are phenomenal facilitators. They're a phenomenal face for the individual goodwills. And then when money is received through our national offices, they are an exceptional facilitator. And why? Because they hold us accountable. They make sure that what we say we're going to do with the money, we do with the money. And then they go back and are the reporting entity for all the different goodwills. And meanwhile, you're also, you also have your own grant initiatives. It's you also have your totally, own fundraising, your totally. own outreach. Yes. But what's critical is, is that when you go back to who are you hiring and how do you mm -hmm. hire, um, it is very important that Jim's um, team be as strong as the local teams are right. because the expectation is they are the face of goodwill as we are locally and we have a responsibility to that. They also have a responsibility on a national level to make sure that they have the strongest, the smartest, and the best representing all of us. In terms of the, the retail space, there are so many changes that are taking place in the retail space. Um, we have the, um, the complete dominance of such organizations as Amazon um, as, as a retailer. We have the transition from stores to showrooms. We have the advent of, um, of course, big box uh, uh, organizations. Do you see any of this affecting you the, in, in terms of how retail is, is shifting so quickly? Um, you know, I th yes, we, it does affect us. You know, uh, we are retailers, so we have to be very mindful of, of what is going on. Um, and I will say there is a, um, we have what's called e-commerce, which is a, a separate part of our division, right. uh, of our retail division, where you can buy books online, you can um, buy the best finds through shopgoodwill.com. Um, so we're in that space as well. Um, but I think it, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. You know, our stores now are inviting. And, mm -hmm. and the one thing that we have that other uh, retailers don't have is if people love to come for the thrill of the shop. You know, you don't know what you're going to find in our store today. Right. And guess what? Because the turnover in product is always constant, daily, we have shoppers that come in three, four, five times a week because what they saw yesterday isn't today. And, and with, you know, all due respects to your Targets and your Walmarts and whatever, you, see the you same know what, products you see the same day. products, good product, no, yeah. not, no question about it. But the difference is you come to us this morning and guess what? You'll see a different product than you did yesterday. It's kind of the way and retail used to be. It's, yeah, it's the thrill of the shop. And no matter how strong online shopping comes, you still can't go and touch and, and have that entertainment factor of shopping in a goodwill. And I think when you look across the picture, you, you see trends. And innovation uh, is a key element of what takes place at goodwills. And, and every goodwill uh, organization really has an entrepreneurial spirit about it. So innovation and collaboration are key in terms of uh, are key in terms of why after 110 years uh, we are what we are. And so if you take uh, the shift from kind of bricks and mortars to from bricks to clicks, uh, you know we've stepped up to that. Uh, the innovation took place at one Goodwill, and then all Goodwills really have signed up, and that's Shop Goodwill. Uh, shopgoodwill.com and through that uh, you see more innovations and you see Goodwills who across country partner with eBay and Amazon and finding new channels but then with that the innovation of new job creation came so now uh, retail team members have new career paths to move into the e-commerce business become listers, photographers, etc. So it all just kind of takes our mission to the next level every day and and today we're exploring new uh, e-commerce types activities uh, because that world moves pretty quickly so we have to stay with it if we were to stay relevant and meaningful to all all of our stakeholders I think we're smart students of business which is critical and we're also great copycatters <laughs> you know we 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 know where uh, whether within the goodwill movement or outside, who's doing it right? And you know, if somebody's doing it right, there is not a one of us that doesn't go ahead and say, okay, great, 
if that's, a, if that's the model, let's try to put it in our goodwill. And like I said, that's whether with, it's within the goodwill movement or outside. It, it, truly, students of businesses are what we are. Well, this has been a wonderful exp exploration of goodwill. Jim Gibbons, uh, Catherine Malloy, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us, and thank you so much for your insights. And thank you for having us. Thanks. May I? Jim, shake your He's hand. He's going to shake your hand. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.